Hey everyone, today I'm going to go through what I wear and what I bring as a woman working in the north of Canada on the oil fields. I'm a wildlife biologist and I often spend about two to three weeks in pretty remote places all around the world. I'm either staying in a hotel or I'm staying in a work camp, spending about 12 hour days hiking through nature, observing wildlife, taking measurements, recordings of the natural environment that I'm working in. I always need to make sure that I have everything that I need on me in my backpack or packed in my truck in order to deal with emergencies that might come up or a natural disasters that I might run into and running into aggressive wildlife. I don't have a chance to go back or to even go to a grocery store because I'm so far out in the middle of nowhere. A lot of times I'm being exposed to anywhere from plus 40 Celsius to minus 40 Celsius. Extreme weather, hail, snow, wind, rain, heat, all in one day because this is Canada and when we're working up north we're encountering pretty much everything that could go wrong. So this is what I carry to keep me safe, protected, and what I need to do all of the work that I'm supposed to do. What I wear totally depends on the season and whether it's winter or summer. So I always start with a few base items and that's my shoes, my pants, and my top and then add on as needed for the season. On top, I always wear a flame retardant button-up field shirt. Unfortunately, I have to wear long sleeves and long pants when I'm out in the field, and that's for safety reasons. I also wear a high-vis vest, and I use the vest to clip on all of the items that I need to carry in the field. So it has the double duty of being high visibility and allowing people to see me when I'm walking around, especially in the evening or walking near roads. I have to wear flame retardant coveralls. So these coveralls are what I wear when I'm near a facility or construction site so that I don't catch on fire. Always make sure I have some really comfortable thick hiking socks to wear under my boots. It's a big old pair of boots. I actually wear during summer and winter because they are waterproof and warm enough for both. I do in the winter wear thicker socks underneath these otherwise and usually toe warmers too otherwise they'll get way too cold in there. I also always wear a pair of gloves because I am grabbing branches while I'm walking through forests. I'm jumping over barbed wire fences. Rain jacket. I always make sure that I have a rain jacket on in the field. If I'm in the summer, I stick to the essentials that I've already shown you, but if it's in the winter, I'll add a balaclava or something to cover my face from the heavy winds up north, a toque or beanie for you Americans, a big thick faux fur parka, a headlamp because the sun goes down really early up north, and a thicker pair of winter gloves. Sometimes I'll also bring some goggles along to prevent snow blindness. This is what I actually bring in my bag with me. So I'm often out in the middle of nowhere. I need to carry emergency equipment where I can cook meals with in an emergency situation, a small towel to keep things dry, a emergency water purifier. I also use a in-reach device or a satellite phone. I bring a field book for taking field notes, a hard hat to keep my head safe from hazards, a GPS to take point locations of all of the different wildlife features I observe and to navigate through the backcountry, a pair of gloves for taking environmental soil and water samples, a pair of safety glasses, a life-proof case to protect my cell phone, things waterproof and everything proof pretty much, a bunch of plastic bags if I need to take a biological sample, a camera to take photos of environmental features and habitats, a clipboard to keep all my field notes together and to take notes on what I'm doing, a container of bear spray when working in bear country, extra carabiners to attach all of my equipment to myself, a pair of snowshoes if I'm working in the winter, a bunch of Laura Bar granola bars, a hat to wear if it's really hot and sunny out, a water bottle, and a travel mug for coffee and water while I'm out. An extra pair of a little bit of duct tape just to repair anything that comes up, and a fire extinguisher. So I usually carry this one in my truck. That's what I actually carry in my backpack with me. Now let's go through what I bring into the field in order to make my stay in a work camp more comfortable. I bring my personal laptop in case there's absolutely nothing to do after work. Sandals for either the shower or just walking around in my room if it's dirty. Earplugs for when everyone else is being really loud at night. My yoga mat to try to get some yoga in before work. Noise cancelling headphones for the plane. Little containers of laundry detergent to do my laundry at camp. 
a really disgusting burner where I use this to cook my vegan food on when I have nothing to eat. All right, now let's go through what I pack for personal hygiene and comfort when I am in the field. So I bring my own shampoo and conditioner and I bring this little travel bag to put all of my hygiene essentials. I bring a sewing kit if I need to do little repairs to my clothing, toothpaste, sunscreen, chapstick with sunscreen built into it, my contact lenses and my contact lens solution, a travel toothbrush, a travel hairbrush, and I also bring these little containers of face and hair oils because it's so dry up north. I really need to just put straight oil into my hair, whether that's the Earthling Beauty ones that I have here or the just straight argan oil that I put into my hair. Deodorant. And I also bring a first aid kit with a bunch of various different stuff like bandages, anything I need to do to do first aid in the field, and pills and anti-nausea medication, everything there. So that's what I have in my hygiene kit. All right guys, thank you for watching this video and make sure to comment below if you are wanting to become a wildlife biologist and if this gave you any ideas of the type of work that you'll be doing in the future. If this is your first time watching one of my videos and you are 60% of the viewers who have not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and click the little bell to get notifications when I post new content. I make videos about wildlife biology, environmental biology, environmental activism, and if you are wanting to become an environmental biologist or a wildlife biologist, I highly recommend you check out some of my other videos. Thank you guys for watching.